in Hebrews chapter number 11. So you don't have to turn there. I'll read that to you and then we'll, we'll turn to Genesis chapter number 22. But first, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we do thank you, God, for all your goodness, your grace, your love. God, we're thankful to know this morning there are names written in the Lamb's book of life. And God, that happened when we accepted you. God, when we knew we were lost, and God, you wanted to save us, and Father, we said yes, and Lord, you moved in. And God, now our name's written in the Lamb's book of life. For all eternity, God, we're there. I pray right now, God, you'd help us around the Word of God this morning. Bless us, I pray. Help us to rightly divide the Word of truth, and God, may we say only those things that will be pleasing in thy sight. And God, bless us today. Touch us in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. I want to preach to you a little while this morning, and I'll not be too long, I don't think, on this message, this thought, the faith of Abraham. The faith of Abraham. Hebrews chapter number 11 is a, a, a chapter of the heroes of faith. And Hebrews chapter number 11 in verse 17, uh, the Bible says this, By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son, now that is a testimony of the story that I'm going to read to you this morning. That is a testimony and a, a uh, in Hebrews 11, that's, that's a testimony of fact that happened in the Old Testament. Now Abraham, we know that uh, he was a man of faith and the Bible tells us that he's the father of a great nation and he had the, the task, one of the greatest trials a man could ever face, Abraham faced that. And he did it because of his faith and because of his belief and because of his love for the Lord Jesus Christ. In Genesis chapter 22, we find these words, and I'm going to, I'm going to read and I'm going to preach, and then I'm going to read and I'm going to preach some more. Amen. Till we get through this morning. But verse number 1 of Genesis chapter number 22, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham and he said behold here I am and as we find these words we find out that Abraham was close enough to hear the voice of God and friend I declare to you today if we're close enough to hear the voice of God then we're where God wants us to be if we can hear him but if we're not close to God then we can't hear his call we can't hear his voice but Abraham was was uh, being faced with a temptation. Now this word temptation here is not a temptation to sin. It is a trial that the Bible is speaking about. God tempteth no man to sin, and neither is he tempted. But let me tell you something. He did test Abraham. And as he tests Abraham, remember, he will test you and I from time to time. And on occasion, God will test us to try our faith. And friend, today, if you've been saved by the grace of God, You've got saving faith. Amen. When you got saved, you got saved because you had faith to believe the promise of the Word of God. You had faith to believe the plan of salvation of the Word of God. So Abraham is being tested of his faith. And here's, here's what he says. He Immediately when God cried out to him, he said, Here, uh, here I am. In verse 2, And he said, Here's was his temptation. Now you, you read with me and you... Let it be in your mind the gravity of these words and the, and the sincerity of this uh, plan that God has out uh, for Abraham. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I tell thee of. Now the, the Abraham is given this temptation he is to take not one son, but his only son. The only son that he has, he is to take him. And God says, you're going to take him and you're going to offer him on the altar of sacrifice to me. Now, Abraham was used to making sacrifice. He would make sacrifice of, of uh, lambs and, and those things in an offering for sin. And no doubt back in his mind, though, he remembers the days maybe when he had saw himself human sacrifice that were sacrificed to false gods. But here God's testing Abraham, and he's trying Abraham, and he says, Abraham, you take thine only son, the only son that thou lovest. Now you imagine if you're a mom, dad here this morning, and you've got a son, 
no matter if it's your only son or not, and the Lord commanded to take your only son or take that child even, whether boy or girl, and I want you to offer him to me for a sacrifice. Oh, would that not be a horrifying thought? And would that not be a horrible thought that you would think, God, you want me to take my son and you want me to offer him upon the altar of sacrifice and take his life? Now, Abraham, I don't believe, he may have thought these things, but I don't believe Abraham questioned God about what God wanted him to do. Friends, sometimes God gives us things to do and we might not understand it, but the best thing we can ever do in life is whatever God tells us to do, that we'll do. You'll be happier, I'll be happier when I'm in the will of God. And friend, it's important to be in the will of God. It's important to be in the will of God in your family, in your church, in your home, in your life. It's important to be in the will of God. Now Abraham wanted to be in the will of God. So here's what Abraham did. He's give the, he said, you take him to a mountain that I'll tell you of and you offer him on the altar of sacrifice. Verse number 3, And Abraham rose up early in the morning. Uh, he didn't wait around. Now this thought came, this, this, uh, God spoke to him sometime in the night and early in the morning when it was Abraham's time of worship, when it was his time to be alone with God, he got up and Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went into the place of which God had told him. So he got up. And he got, the, he got his ass on the, you know, put his saddle on him. And he got him together and he put the wood on him. And he got a couple of his uh, servants and he said, All right, we've got a journey to go on. Now remember, Isaac knows nothing of this. But we also know that Abraham knows all about it. The servants don't know anything about it. But guess who knows about it? Abraham and the Lord. Amen. And so he, in his obedience to do what God wanted him to do, he starts his journey. And, and verse 4, Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. Now the third day he had traveled three days. Three days he'd been in his journey. What went through his mind on those three days? Don't you know the devil came to him and said, What are you doing, Abraham? Why in the world are you doing this? Why would you even do such a thing? I want to tell you something, friend. When you're in your, your time of testing from God, when God is testing you and when God is putting you through a sore trial, I want you to know the devil will come along and say, Why don't you give this up? Why don't you quit trying to serve the Lord? Why don't you quit going to church? Why don't you quit trying to live for Him? Because all it's doing is causing you heartache. All it's doing is causing you pain. All it's doing is causing you suffering. You know why? Because the devil's the devil. Hey man, that's all he is. There's not a better name for him, but he's the devil. And when God is putting you through a test, the devil is going to try his best to discourage you. But I want to tell you something, friend. You keep your head up. Hey man, you get your head up and you keep your heart right with God. And I'll tell you what will happen on the other side. You're going to come out of it. Hey man, you're going to come through on the other side. And you You'll be coming through singing there's victory in Jesus. Amen. Why? Because there is, friend. You stay with God. God will stay with you. So Abraham, he went on his journey. And then in verse 5, And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here uh, with the ass, and I and the lad. Listen, listen. He said, I and the lad will go yonder and worship. He says, we're going to go worship God. Now, I don't know how excited Abraham might have been, but I know maybe even with a heavy heart, his heart was on the worship of God. Now, friends, you may have come in here this morning with all kinds of burdens, all kinds of worries, all kinds of fears, all kinds of heartache, but you know why you're here? You're here because God wants you to be here. Amen. You're here in the will of God. You're here making, uh, making plans as you came to worship the Lord. Or maybe you didn't come with plans to worship God. But guess what? God wants to visit with you. God wants to speak sweet peace to your soul today. Why? Because you're in a place of God and you're where God can, can, can hear you and you can meet with Him. You can meet with God's people. And let me tell you something. The devil's gone today. Amen. The devil's not around here to mess with you today. Amen. We know that God in heaven though is here and He wants you to worship with Him today. So Abraham, he said, we're going, men, the lad's going yonder and we're going to 
worship. But guess what he also, he said, he said, and come again. Now he had no doubt in his mind because Abraham, being the man of faith, had no doubt in his mind that when he come back, Isaac was going to be with him. You say, preacher, how could that be? What's Abraham told Isaac to do? Or told Abraham, what's God told Abraham to do? He said, go offer your son Isaac on the altar of sacrifice. But here with all the confidence in, in the world, with all the confidence that Abraham could have in him, he said, the lad and I are going to go yonder and worship, but we're going to come back. We're going to be back. We'll come again in the appointed time. We'll be right back here and we'll go to the house. And so not understanding it all, I don't believe Abraham did. Not having the full picture, I don't, I, I don't believe Abraham did as of yet. And of course, Isaac didn't know nothing that was going on. It was, you know, he just knew he was with the, hey, he knew he was with the Father in the will of the Father. Amen. Now, friend, there's something to be said for being in the will of the Father. And Isaac was in the will of his father and just following right along whatever, whatever his daddy said to do, he was going to do. Now it said Abraham was anywhere, or Isaac was anywhere between 20 and 30 years old, a young man, but he was still, you know, he was uh, uh, still a man. But he was willing to do the will of the Father. Let me ask you something today. Are you willing to do the will of the Father? Whatsoever he saith to you, are you willing to do it? We got some youngins here this morning that God's going to use one of these days in some, in some manner. And children, let me say to you young people today, just stay in the will of God. Amen. Stay by the stuff. What mom and daddy's teaching you here by bringing you to the house of God is telling you it's important to be present in the house of the Lord. That's what mom and daddy's saying. They're not saying let's go to church because it's the right thing to do even though it is they're saying let's go to church because because it's the place to be on Sunday it's the place that we can go and worship God and be around our family and so so young as today when God speaks to your heart be sure to listen when God begins to give you what to do in life be sure to stay in touch with the Lord and do whatever he says to do you that's what Isaac was doing he's just trying to follow his father and friend, today as believers, that's what we should do is do our best to follow the will of the Father. And Abraham took the wood, verse 6, of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. So here we find out that, that there stands Isaac, here's Abraham, here's the wood. Uh, Abraham picks up the wood, he straps it to his son's back, and his son never asked a question, and he said, we're going to go worship. He got his knife, and he got the fire in his hand, and off, he, off they went to worship the Lord. And Isaac spake unto Abraham, his father said, now this first time we hear Isaac speaking, he says to his father, <coughs> my father, and he said, here am I, my son. And he said, behold the fire and the wood, but where's the lamb for a burnt offering? Isaac begins to wonder then, trusting his father, knowing that his father's doing what he always does is go and worship and sacrifice. But Isaac notices, you know, there's not a, here's the, we got the wood, it's on my back. You got the fire in your hand. But Lord, I, but Father, I look around and I don't see a lamb. What are we going to do? Why are we doing this? What are we going to do? Excuse me, I'm going to have to slow down. Amen. I'm about to preach myself into a heart attack. Amen. And Isaac spake unto his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham's answer was this. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide. Look what he said. God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. That satisfied Isaac. And he says, so they went both of them together. So they stopped and Isaac asked a question and Abraham said, my son God himself, <laughs> God will provide himself a lamb. Oh friend, that, that puts me into mind of when Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. He is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And God, him, God Himself provided Himself a Lamb for the salvation of sin. So He and Isaac, here they go. And they're, you know, things are getting, things are beginning to pick up because they're fixing to come to the place. And they, <clears throat> and they came to the place which God had told him of. 
Abraham built him an altar there, laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Here's Isaac, here's Abraham. Should have chose somebody short. <laughs> now he gets his son. He gets his son Isaac. Now listen to me now. This is his only son. This is the son that he loves dearly. This is the one that God promised that He would give him a son, and out of that son would come a great nation. This is the son that was going to start the lineage of Christ. You read it in the book of Matthew. It started with Abraham beget Isaac and Isaac beget Jacob. And you go down through that. This is the one that God has said, I'm going to make a great nation out of. But here's Abraham and here's, here's his son. And he looks at his son and said, you know, when he's looking at his son, he said, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. But God told him, he said, you offer your son. And so Abraham, without fear or without whatever God was going to do, you know why? Because he knew that God was right and whatever God would do was be right. And so he got his son and he, and he took his hands and he bound him. You hold your hands back. He bound him like this. He sat down over here. He's too big for me to... The wood's laying here. Listen to me now. The wood's laying here. Isaac is laying here. And he leans him back and he grabs his knife without a minute's hesitation. He took that knife, he looked at his son, and with love in his heart he raised his hand up. You know what he was going to do? He was going to cut his throat. He was going to take his life because God said, Take your son, thine only son Isaac, and offer him to me for a sacrifice. Now you can go on back and sit down. You got the picture? Now you think about it a minute. That was his only son. That was the father that loved his son. I've got a boy. And I love that boy. Amen. I love my son. He's, he, he preaches around the world. He's, he's, he's what, a, you know, what a, a pastor could raise a son he wanted to be. Amen. That's my boy. And he, all over the world, he's, he's in missions all around the world, traveling all the time, preaching the gospel. But I put myself in Abraham's place, and I put my son in Isaac's place, and I think, oh, Lord, how could I ever do such a thing? Do I have that kind of faith? You say, well, if Abraham knew what he did, how could he do that? Well, let me tell you, he drawed the knife back. Let me read it to you. I'm ahead of myself. And, the, and Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son and the angel of the Lord. Who is the angel of the Lord? It's the person of the Lord Jesus Christ appearing in the Old Testament. And what does he say? About the time Abraham was committed, he was committed to doing what God said. If the angel of the Lord had not spoke to him, he would have done it and God knew that. You said, well, now, Abraham, but he, he wouldn't really. No, sir. Abraham, the man of faith that he was, he had faith enough to believe that if he took his son's life, remember, he told the young men, we're going to both come back in a few days. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're coming back in a few days, and we're going to go worship. He knew that God would raise him up because he knew the promise of God that out of him would come a great nation. And he knew that somehow God would raise him up, so he was willing to do what God said to do, even if it took his son's life. The angel of the Lord <clears throat> called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. Boy, don't you know that sweet words in the, in the ears of Abraham. When he heard the Father say his name, when he heard the heavens open and, and the angel of the Lord say, Abraham, Abraham, right when he was about to strike, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Lord, here am I, always ready to listen, always ready to hear the voice of the Lord. And he said, Abraham, Abraham, and Abraham said, here am I. And the Lord said, and he said, lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything to him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. Abraham passed the test. 
In the temptation and the testing of life, Abraham had passed the test. And friend, I'm telling you today, if, you're, if you are in a testing time in your life, if you're not, you're going to be in a testing time in your life. I'll tell you how you'll pass the test. Is if you stay with the Lord, if you stay by the stuff, if you just keep on with the Lord, no matter how dark it may seem, no matter how rough it may get, stay with the Lord. I've been through some tests in my life. I've been through some trials in my life. And I know from time to time the devil's come along and say, why don't you just quit? Why don't you just lay it all down? Listen, friend, there's nothing to quit to. Amen. There's nothing behind me I want to go back to. There's nothing behind me that I want to have instead. I'll just stay with God. Amen. I'm just going to stay by the stuff. And when the temptations and the testings come, if you'll stay with God, you'll come out on the other side and you'll look back and say, Hallelujah. Amen. I passed the test. Amen. So, he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, only son, from me. Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, uh, behold behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram, offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. There is my substitute, amen. There is the substitute for my sins. We see it here that not, uh, Isaac did not have to die. He did not have to perish, but God sent a substitute alone to pay the price so that he, his, hey, hallelujah, the ram was the substitute for Isaac. Isaac didn't have to give his life because God gave him a substitute. Oh, what a blessing. Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah-Jireh and is said to this day in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Now let me make a couple of comparisons right here and I'll be through. That was the introduction by the way. Amen. I like that introduction, don't you? Hallelujah to God. I'm glad for Abraham. I'm glad for Isaac. I'm glad for the picture of the plan of salvation. We see here that Abraham is commanded to sacrifice his son. Isaac without question begins the journey. Abraham journeyed three days. Abraham saw the place afar off. Abraham promised to return with his child. He prepared the sacrifice, and the sacrifice is prepared, and the offering is made. Now you say, well, he didn't complete that. No, but in his mind, in his heart, Abraham had completed that. Now let's go 2,000 years later, and we see another type here. We see Isaac as a, as a type of the son. Isaac was willing to go. Christ was willing to go. Hallelujah. He didn't offer up his words of, of rebellion against God, but the, but the father loved his son. God so loved the world that he gave who his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life I'll tell you what my friend today if people die and go to hell it'll they'll die over the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ because if you plead the blood and ask Jesus into your heart and believe the gospel message you can be saved and if God's dealing with you today there's never a better time to call on the name of the Lord than when God is dealing with you and friend, today God gave His only begotten Son. Isaac was the only son of Abraham. And God gave His only Son that He loved dearly. Why? Because He was the only one that could pay the price of my sin. So we see that Isaac being the type of the Lord, we see that he was willing to go. We see that Isaac bore the burden on his back. Friend, I see that Jesus bore my sin burden. Not only did he carry the cross that he was to be sacrificed on, but he bore the burden of my sin on the cross of Calvary when he was there. He bore my burden as Isaac bore the burden. And then we see that as, as, as Isaac went without resistance. Why? Because he, he believed his daddy. Amen. He had faith in his daddy. So as he went without resistance, so did Christ go to the cross of Calvary without resistance, without, no, without uh, complaining or without... Uh, you know, he knew God. Listen, Isaac didn't know what was coming, but Jesus knew what was coming. He knew the pain and the suffering. He knew the sorrow that he was going to be, be beset by. But guess what? He went anyway. He knew the beatings he was going to take. He knew the crown of thorns. He knew the, the spear that was going to be pressed into his side. But guess what? He loved me and he went anyway. Hallelujah to God. That's my Jesus. That's my Savior. And as he went, he went willingly without resisting. You say, could he have resisted? God can do what he wants to do. 
Amen. He's God in heaven. And while he was on the cross, did he have to stay there? No. He could have called ten legions of angels to come and get him down. But guess what? He loved me. And guess what? He loved you. And he was willing to die for you that you might go free. Hallelujah. I'm glad I'm free today by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we see that Isaac did not argue nor resist, but he Isaac laid down his life as Christ laid down his life. Now you say Isaac didn't have to give his life. No, why? Because there's a substitute over in the bushes. Amen. But he did it. He was willing to do it. Why? Because it was the Father's will. Why was Jesus willing to give his life? It was because of the Father's will. Why did Jesus have to die? Because there was no substitute for him. He was my substitute. He is your substitute. And you're saved today by the grace of God because of the substitute of the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. That became sin for me who knew no sin. Man, I can't say it any plainer. He died for you. He lives for you. Why? Because He loves you. Do you know Him today? And if you know Him today, aren't you glad? Amen. Aren't you glad that one day you accepted the payment for your sins in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ? Our substitute, the Lamb of God. Our substitute, Jesus Christ. No wonder John in John chapter 1, 29 Verse number 29 of John chapter 1, John looked and he saw Jesus coming. No wonder he looked and saw him and he said, Behold the Lamb of God. John saw him for what he was, the Lamb of God that would take away the sin of the world. Do you know him today? Are you saved by the grace of God? They preach to you, act excited. Hey, man, I am excited. I don't have to die and go to hell because of the blood of Jesus. Amen. But if you're, you're here today and you don't know Jesus, if you don't trust Him as your Savior, if you don't realize you're a sinner, then you can never be saved by the grace of God. But when you realize you're a sinner and the Holy Spirit of God convicts you, then friend, you've got the opportunity to go to heaven. Otherwise, you reject God and you die and go to hell without Him. How is it with you today? Father, we thank You. Lord, for the Word of God, Lord, we've done our best to mind You. Father, I pray right now, God, you'd help us, Lord. I pray that you touch every heart that's here. Lord, for those that are here that have been saved, God, I pray that you'd thrill us in our heart and our soul, knowing our names lit written in the Lamb's Book of Life because of the sacrifice of your Son. And God, should there be someone here that's lost, God, touch them today. Convict them, Lord, of their sin. God, I pray that you'd save them before it's eternally too late. What you'll do now, we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. While everyone stands, every head bowed, no one looking around.